Hey there, to help you with the different concepts and sub-concepts of quantitative aptitude, basically mathematics, I have come up with a series in which I will be solving uh, quant questions one by one every day. I will be getting the access to the video on YouTube. So let's start this process tradition of, you know, having, I will be doing almost 200 questions, 200 days. Let's start with this beautiful question from numbers. It says a 12 digit number divisible by 72 consists of only fours and sixes. Find the number of sixes in the largest possible such number. Largest possible such number. Which number? That is divisible by 72. Now 72. What is 72? It's 8 multiplied by 9. Which means if a number is, uh, is divisible by 72, it should be divisible by both 8 and 9. Okay, that makes sense. Perfect. Now, what is the divisibility rule of 8? Last 3 digits of the number must be divisible by 8. Okay, perfect. For 9, the sum of the digits should be divisible by 9. Okay. Now, you might be thinking that 72 can also be done as 2 into 36, 4 into 9, uh, sorry, uh, 72 is 8 into 9, then we have uh, uh, 36 into 2, 12 into 6. So, why I chose 8 and 9 only? The reason is because I know the divisibility rule of 8 as well as 9. That's the only reason. That's for keeping my life as simple as possible. So, let's check one by one. First, I will check the divisibility by 9. Let's do that. Nice. So, uh, let's say I have um, n times n times uh, 6 and the remaining number of times 4. So, we have 12 digit numbers. If n digits are 6, then remaining 12 minus n digits will be 4. Perfect. And the sum of it will be 6n plus 12 minus n times 4. And this guy should be a multiple of 9. Alright. So, a multiple of 9 can be written as 9 times something. Let that something be k. So, 9k. Okay, now we'll solve for it. If I open the bracket, what do I get? 6n plus 48 minus 4n is equal to 9k. Nice. Which gives us 2n plus 48. 48 should be a multiple of 9. That is 9k. What to do now? I'll have to. I'll have to put the values uh, in n and check if this number is. Uh, if if I get an, uh, an a natural natural number as k. Okay. Because k should be a natural number. That is the only way this can be a multiple of 9. So let me do it one by one. Now how do it? If I write it as, let's say, 2n, okay, let me do one thing here. Let me have all the variables in one place, like 9k minus 2n, sending 2n in the right hand side, and then reversing is 48. Now, this looks like, okay, a solvable equation. We have two variables in just one equation. What can be done? We'll have to put in numbers, obviously. So, we have, I'll make a table for k and n. I'll put the values for n and Corresponding values for k. Okay. Nice. Let's do that. So, if I uh, can see here, 9 is an odd number, 2 is an even number. This 2n will always be, this 2n will always be even and this 9k will be odd or even depending on what the value of k is. If k is odd, I'll get an odd number here. If k is even, I'll get an even number here. And this 40 is also even. So, even minus even gives you an even number, which means 9k as well as 2n must be even because 48 is even. By the way, 2n is always even. So, the only possibility left over here is that k is an even number. Nice. So, if k is an even number, what will values in k assume? Starting with 2. If I put k as 2, 9 2s are 18, 18 minus what is 48? It's not possible, isn't it? Because n cannot be negative. So, I need to choose the value of k in such a way that 9k, that 9k is greater than 48. That is the only way if I subtract something from 9k, I'll get 
48. So 9k must be greater than 48, which means k must be greater than 5. So 9 fives are 45. 9 sixes are 54. That makes sense. If I put k as 6, 9 sixes are 54. 54 minus 6 is 48. That means n will be 3. Oh, wow. I got a value. I got a value, guys, here. Okay. 6 and 3. Can there be more values? Is that a possibility? Obviously, there will be more values. Now, I'll tell you a very... By the way, there are multiple ways to solve this in equation. I won't go into that because that will be more of algebra. So, but I'll be, I'll be, you know, giving you <clears throat> a technique not to randomize this thing. This was an easy variable, easy coefficient. That's why we were able to solve it quickly. But there can be, you know, complex variables also. For that, there is a technique which I'll be discussing in some of the questions. Uh, but right now, 6 and 3 is there. I want to show you a pattern here. So, what happens? K is 6, the first value, well, N is 3. So, K will increase with the coefficient of N and N will decrease with the coefficient of K or vice versa. K, K will decrease with the coefficient of N or N will increase with the coefficient of K. Having said that, N's value is 3, it will increase by 9. It becomes 12. And I said, n increased by coefficient of k, k should be decreasing with coefficient of n and the coefficient of n is minus 2. So, something decreases by minus 2, what does that mean? <laughs> something decreases by minus 2, that means it increases by 2, right? 2 negatives make a positive. So, I'll have 11 here. Now, the problem is, it will be really stupid of me to go beyond this. You know why? Because the number is 12 digit only. N cannot be more than 12, guys. It cannot even be 12 because it has to be less than 12. So basically, this is not possible. If I go ahead, I'll be crossing the threshold. 6 and 3 is the only possibility. Now, N times 6. The question asks, find the numbers of 6 in the largest possible such number. Largest possible such number. By the way, we got NS3. So NS3 looks correct to me, right? But that is not the end. We also have to check the divisibility by 8. Let's do that. So, we got NS3. That means there are 6, 6, 6 in any order. We have 3 sixes, And we have uh, remaining uh, how many? We have 9 times 4. Cool. So far, so good. Last 3 digits must be divisible by 8. How is that possible? Last 3 digits divisible by 8. All right. What can happen? I can have in the last, we can have 666, 664, right? 646, 644. But we keep on doing this, we'll get confused, isn't it? We have to do some kind of, you know, uh, trickery. Okay, so if a number is divisible by 8, it has to be divisible by 2 and 4. By 2, it will be there, it's an even number. By 4, so divisibility to 4 is, the last two days must be divisible by 4. So in the last these three digits, these two should be filled with a number that is divisible by 4, which is possible in how many ways? I can fill with 44. I can fill with uh, 64. I can't fill with 66 or, you know, 46 because that won't be divisible by 4. So, 44 and 64 will be there. What will be here? So, now I have jotted down to that the three digit number that we're talking about should be something 4, 4 or something 6, 4. Let's check both of them. I need to put something here. It can be 6 or 4. I will be putting, because I can use only 6 or 4. I will be putting 6 or 4 here, 6 or 4 here and check which one, for which one it is a multiple of 8. So here if I put 6, 4, 4, that is the number I got. Or I put 4, I got 4, 4, 4 as the number. Here if I put 6, I'll get 6, 6, 4. If I put 4, I'll get 4, 6, 4 as a number. I have to check which of these is a multiple of <clears throat> 8. Let's do that. If I divide this by 8, 8, 8 are 64, 4 is a remainder, it's not a multiple. 8, 5 is a 40, again 4 is a remainder, not a multiple. 8, 8 is a 64, 8, 3 is a 24. It is a multiple. And here, 8, 5 is a 40, this is also multiple. 6, 6, 4, 4, 6, 4. If you see here, we have used two sixes here and one six here. And overall, overall, we had three times sixes, which we have already calculated. So both these numbers actually make sense. 
which means whatever the last three digits are, be it six six four four six four. Overall, we have three sixes for sure. Just mark A and get going. Thank you.